Good morning, God bless you. Welcome to our Sunday morning Faith Alive service. Uh, just want to start out by wishing all the mothers out there a very blessed and happy Mother's Day. Uh, it is a different Mother's Day, but nevertheless, it is Mother's Day. And so we want to take this moment uh, to just honor all of the great mothers out there. And as you're logging in, we're going to go ahead and uh, get situated and set up here. So give us a few minutes here as we are dialing in and ready to go into God's Word here momentarily. Uh, blessings to everyone here this morning. I know we had a beautiful weekend today. We woke up to rain, but nonetheless, God is still good, right? And so I'm excited today because God has got a word for us. And uh, I'm glad you're tuning in today. I'm glad you're here with us on Mother's Day. So please, please feel special in our honor that you're going to enjoy the presence of God today mightily. Um, share this with a friend. Let's get out there and just share this, this time together. Uh, this is our morning faith uh, live Sunday service we want to share with you so blessings to everyone so my wife is coming here to welcome everyone here this morning wherever you are mothers you are loved and you're cherished and we thank God for you and so we want to believe that God is going to do great things on your behalf so here she is she's going to welcome you this morning welcome to faith alive where he's alive and well say to God bless the name of Jesus we thank you for uh, all the mothers on uh, today. Happy Mother's Day. We love you with the love of Jesus. God is shining upon you because you are great. You are awesome. You are beautiful in the sight of God. Those that, uh, women of God, those that fear the Lord, they shall be praised. So we praise God for your children on today. We pray that they bless you. Rise up and bless the women of God on today. We love you. We pray that you would open your hearts and open your minds to receive the word on today from Apostle Ball as he brings forth the word. God bless you. Love you. Amen. Well, praise God. Welcome again. Happy Mother's Day to every mother that is watching. So we thank God for you and what you mean to this earth. And so we are just excited about the word today. We want to go into the word momentarily. And as we just prepare and those that are coming in, uh, blessings to you. Blessings to all of you. I see you. Uh, logging in now and so we welcome you here. I hope you're excited about Jesus today. Uh, just a couple quick announcements. As you do know, uh, we will take our communion afterwards. So why don't you go ahead and prepare now before we get into the word here. Get your communion elements ready. Uh, we're going in strong today. We have a mighty word from the kingdom of heaven. So we want to bless you. Uh, we want God's face to shine upon you. And so don't forget children. I know our preschool class is going to convene today at 2 o'clock p.m. on Zoom. Uh, I believe elementary is going to be at 1 o'clock today on Zoom with Sister Patsy and the pre-Ks with Sister Gabby. Uh, don't forget 5, uh, 5 o'clock on Wednesdays. Our upper elementary has class, and this week I believe with Sister Nicole. And so thank God for all of our teachers going strong. Our crew youth ministry every Tuesday at 7 p.m. with Minister Noble, Minister Akeisha. Uh, great things are going on. Don't forget about those things. And on Saturdays at 1, we are going strong with our Faith Finders Sunday School. So be a part of what's happening in the kingdom of God. And so we welcome you here this morning. We're just excited about just being in God's uh, presence again. We want to enjoy this time together. So get to that comfortable place, all right? Get to that place where you are settled, uh, wherever you can be to just focus completely on God. Uh, we want to be a blessing right to you on your computer screen, on your phone screen, on your tablet or iPad screen, or even on your big screen in your living room. However you're viewing today, we want to welcome you into the presence of God here. We're excited about God. Uh, also, please don't forget, guys, uh, and I'm going to announce at the end, and there'll be something at the bottom. Uh, we do have a, a virtual altar at the end of this service. Uh, if those that are in need of prayer, maybe you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need prayer or agreement. Uh, we have someone waiting to pray for you immediately following the service. So please do not forget uh, the number information is going to be coming at the end. It's going to be uh, pinned at the bottom of our broadcast. And so with the access code, please take advantage of our virtual altar. We might can't lay hands on you naturally at the altar here in the church, but we've created a virtual altar so that you can get what you need and come into faith and agreement with men and women of God. Amen. And so we're excited. Don't forget to, I've been overjoyed to be able to just give away our books here at Faith Walk. And we thank God for those that have uh, received and given us great reviews. So again, I want to be a blessing to the mothers today. And so if you're a mother and you desire a book, and again, um, giving you time to log in and you don't have a book, mothers, all mothers, if you just simply email me uh, a great message, the first five moms, I will send you the book of your choice, the Faith Walk Journey. Here it is, Confessions Become Your Possessions or Lord, I Hear You. And so either one you want, 
mothers to the first five mothers I will send you a free book so please email me my email address is pastor at faithwalkharvestctr.org again that's pastor at faithwalkharvestctr.org and with that I'll also send you a free uh, 2020 uh, journal for notes and so thank God mothers for you so we want to be a blessing to you uh, our Mother's Day gift the first five I will gladly send you a free book as well as a journal and so praise God I'm excited today uh, it is Mother's Day again happy Mother's Day to everyone just want to take a minute before we go into the word strong here mothers are important uh, I thank God for my wife being a great mom to many 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 young ladies and ladies across uh, the globe and we thank God for her uh, and so appreciate all the love and wishing her a happy Mother's Day as well uh, I also wish my mother and my mother-in-law both a happy birthday or happy birthday happy Mother's Day uh, to both of them and so they are godly women I thank God in my life that I'm surrounded by godly women and praise God for that uh, for my mother-in-law pastor Diane and my mom uh, they're just great great examples of integrity and truth and wisdom and so we appreciate them so so very very much um, and I want to take a minute before we go to the word today I want you to think about uh, your mom and what your mother means to you and your mother might not be here now and so I know it might be a tough day for you I know it might be a day of which you know might bring tears and, and memories but I want you to think of something right now everyone here watching what has your mother done for you that has impacted your life the most just think of that one thing that mom has done in your life that's made a great impact all right just mull that over it and once you think of that one thing that mom has done for you and again your mother might not be here but she did something for you specifically that stands out and when you get that in your mind I want you to make a commitment today moving forward that what your mom has deposited in you it is your obligation and duty to deposit that in someone else. And so take what the Lord has given you through your mom and release it. Find someone, connect with someone, and teach someone, show someone what your mom instilled in you. And uh, there are many, many things that I could say that my mother has done for me outside of, of course, uh, sharing Christ with me at a very young age. Uh, the biggest thing that stands out in my life uh, that my mother has done for me, and I share this with you, is my mother taught me how to pray. That's why, saints of God, I love teaching people to pray. I love prayer. I love spending time in prayer. And um, I appreciate her and my godmother. She's not with me anymore, uh, both my godmothers. But they taught me how to pray. They taught me how to live as a godly man of prayer. And I appreciate them. I remember the days of you know my mom and my, and my one of my godmothers. Uh, they prayed every day at the church at 10 a.m. And, and you know what? From 10 to about noon, I was on the altar uh, watching them pray, listening to them pray, and then trying to pray myself and growing in a prayer life. And then my mom would drop my godmother off at home, and they'd pray for another couple hours in the car. Man, I was in the back seat as a little baby, as a little, little child. Lord, have mercy. God, I can't go play. I can't even get out the car. I was surrounded by prayer. And so many of you know now we are people of prayer. Faith Walk is a house built on prayer. So that's why my mother put that in me. My godmother put that in me. And so I'm putting it into as many people as I can. Same thing for you. Whatever your mother has done for you, I want you to make a commitment to pour it into someone else. You are who you are, a great reason because of what your mom has presented to you. Amen? And so why don't you take that and tuck that into uh, just your bank and do that for me, okay? And uh, I just want to take a minute, too. I have some special people who have been so supportive. All of you guys are so supportive. But I, I have a, an aunt that always watches and is very excited. And I, I want to wish my Aunt Fanny a happy Mother's Day to you. I know you're watching and I know you'll appreciate this and uh, I hope it I hope it brings joy to your day and I thank you so much for your support. Amen. I appreciate you not giving me and Kevin whoopings when we got in trouble at your house. We always would get in trouble at my house, but at your house, you were gracious to us. You had grace over our life. So happy Mother's Day, Aunt Fanny. I love you. appreciate all that you do as well. And so there are so many people we could thank, but I really appreciate what you've done, and, and we appreciate you. And so I hope you guys are ready for the word. Uh, we're going in, and we're going to be a blessing to you today. So I hope you're ready for the word. Uh, we're shifting a little bit, and uh, I believe that God is causing things to happen in this earth right now that's making us better, stronger, wiser. And so we've got to move forward with aggression right now. So why don't you take a minute and share this. Get out there on the Facebook land. Let them know the word of God is going forth. So I'm going to begin in prayer with you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you today for your goodness. 
Lord, we honor you because you're great and you're worthy, Lord God. Father, we bless you. Be your, your presence is here right now. Your presence is around us. Uh, your presence is in this place, God. Your presence is in the places where your people are watching now. So God, God of glory, God of honor, God of all love, God of all grace, we ask that you would shower down, Lord God, your word today upon us. We pray, Lord God, that we are ready and equipped eager and willing to go forth in you. Father, begin to do a great work, Lord God, in this day that we've never seen before. Lord, we pray for the opening up of greater things, God, that is to come. We pray, Lord God, that you would enlighten us. We pray, God, that you would give us strength, Lord God, to move forward. Lord, we pray that we are encouraged, Lord God, in spite of what we see. Lord, we are pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. And so, Father, we won't turn back. We won't give in. Lord God, we won't quit. But, Lord, we are focused all the way. And, Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise right now, Lord God. For thine is the kingdom, Lord God. Thine is the power forevermore, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, for these, your people that are gathered here this morning. Lord, they need a word from you. We all need a word from you, God. We're watching because, Lord, we want to hear from you, Lord. Lord, we hear because we desired your presence, Lord God. And Lord, thank you for meeting that need today. Thank you for opening up new doors today. Thank you, God, for causing all things to work together. Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Hope you're ready for the word because it's time to go in, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm excited today. Turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel uh, chapter 12 and verse number 24. 1 Samuel 12 and 24. We're going in. Praise God. Wow. Here's what the Bible says. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. Only fear the Lord and serve him, guys, in truth with everything you got, with your whole heart. Because here, I love this last part of the scripture. He said, for consider. I want you to take a minute and consider right now everything that God has done in your life. I want you to consider not just what he's done, but the great things he has done. You know, God has done many things, but there are some great things. There are some great mountains that we have overcome. There are some great valleys that he's brought us out of. There are some great situations that he sustained us through. And we want to consider that just for a moment. Won't you consider the great monumentous things that God has done in our lives? That's why it, the Bible is telling us here, only fear God. Because it was only God that did what he did for you. Serve him with truth with all your heart. Why? Because only God could have rescued us. Only God could have released what he did in that hour. Only God knew exactly how to position our lives at a certain time to cause us to be where we are right now. And maybe we're not where we want to be, but again, we thank God for where we are in him, right? Because we are planted. We are secure. We are um, solid in him, right? And so we thank God for the truth and the foundation we have in Jesus. And so I want to submit to you this morning, my friends, that no matter how difficult things are right now or how trying things have been, consider the greatness of God. Consider what God has done for you. Consider how God has been your God, how you have been his people, and he's protected you. He's healed you. He's delivered you. God has spoken to you. God has graced you with a gift. God has given you the unction of the Holy One. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And so when I look at this particular text, and I see the prophet Samuel. Samuel was a, a child, a baby, raised up in the temple serving God, chosen to be the prophet of the Lord, spoken and chosen to be the priest of God and the judge of Israel. And here is Samuel now in lieu of all of Israel's idolatry and going up and down and, and their false worship and idolatry and a Baal and all the things they did against God. Samuel is reminding the people, listen, I know we've been through much, but God has not forsaken us at all. Praise God for that. In the midst of your problem, I want to tell you right now that God is good. Samuel is reminding the people that although they had turned from God, they had followed, then they turned. Samuel said, God forbid if I cease not to pray for you. If I cease not, because God has done great things. Serve him with all your heart, saints. Serve him in truth, saints. Don't give up on God. So in the midst of this, I want you to think about right now, in this situation that we're in right now, we're dealing with this COVID-19 virus, right? And all of us are affected by this in some way or another. But I want to challenge you today that instead of magnifying the problem, let's begin to magnify God. 
Let's begin to magnify God more than the problem. Let's not talk about the problem. Let's talk about God who has solved the problem. Let's not talk about who is sick. Let's talk about God who he has healed and who he is going to heal and has already done it through the blood of Jesus. So instead of rehearsing the negative thing, I don't know about you, but I don't like to just be around negative conversation all the time. How you doing? Well, I don't feel well. When do you feel well? That's what I want to ask some people. When is it that you are not in pain? You got to tell yourself, God, you've been good to me and no matter what the problem is, I'm not magnifying that problem. I'm magnifying you, God. I'm magnifying you, God. That's truth today, saints. Ladies and gentlemen, that is truth right now. And so for this uh, few minutes I have with you this morning, I want you to consider right now what we have in front of us. We have what's called this COVID-19 giant. And we're facing this, this giant ourselves. And so I want to take you in scripture today. And I want to show you by considering how David slayed his giant. I want to go and talk to you about how David dealt with his current virus because Goliath was like a virus in a land and that virus was going to spread. He was spreading fear throughout the, the army. He was spreading fear throughout Israel. And so it was like a virus. And so as we consider this COVID-19 giant, I'm going to talk to you how God has been good to us, even showing us through David's days how he slayed his COVID-19 giant, the virus called Goliath. Yes, I said it. That's a, that's a virus. It spreads. It kills, it destroys, it tries to annihilate. And so I believe today God is going to speak. And I want you to, again to consider what great things God has done for you. And so I want to take you into the scriptures here. And I want to show you in 1 Samuel chapter 17, if you can turn there with me. 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse number 15. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to slay this giant today called COVID-19. I don't know about you, but... I'm tired and sick and tired of all the problems and hearing all the complaints and hearing all the bickering and all of the, the political gesturing and all that's going on. It's time now to slay this giant so that God can get the glory. It's time for God to come in and astound mankind with a work that we didn't see coming. And I want to encourage you today to encourage someone right now and say it's time to rise up and slay this giant. It's time to get up and make sure this giant stays down. That's what I'm challenging the people of God today with. We're slaying this giant. We're slaying this thing. It's coming, and but we're coming strong. The body of Christ is rising up, and we're entering in to his territory, and we're taking him down, right? 1 Samuel 17, verse number 15 and 16. Watch this. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. I'll read it again. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. And I speak this word um, because it's real important. And I know uh, many of us, we've learned David and Goliath when we were children. And I'm amazed how the word of God and many things we can learn, how there's so much in it for the right time. And I believe that God has given me a word for this time through the story of David and Goliath. And we're going to walk through that scene just for a few minutes. And I'm going to give you some revelation. I'm going to give you some nuggets that I hope encourages you as we slay this giant together, guys. We got to rise up together. That's going to be a key word, rising up together to slay this giant. And so when we look at this first couple of scriptures here, how David returned, he went and he returned from Saul. You know, we understand that David was occasionally called by Saul to come and help him in his time of distress. David was an anointed man of God or a boy, a child or a young man that he served God. And so he was gifted in worship. He was gifted in knowing how to reach heaven. He was gifted as a musician. And so Saul recognized that in this time of his distress, that tormenting spirit that would come upon him, because remember, Saul was not, he was unchosen by God. The spirit is leaving Saul, and Saul is no longer the one, and David is the one that's rising up. And so in his time of distress, even before we get into the time where he's chasing David down, David knew enough that he was anointed by God, and Saul recognized his anointing and he would call David in and David would play upon the harp and as he played upon the harp that tormenting spirit would be released from him and so I want to share something with you right now what is going on well guys this is preparation time for David to stand up and to deal with Goliath what was going on right now I'm telling you his gift was making room for himself and I want to encourage someone today that in the midst of you slaying your giant your gift is making
room for itself. You don't know how you've been gifted. You don't know how God is going to use you. You got to take every moment as a moment sent from God. And when David went towards Saul, he didn't realize that every time he went and he played that harp before Saul and the spirit of worship hit the atmosphere, it destroyed the spirit of torment. And I believe now that many of us are gifted with God in us. And God is saying, your gift is getting ready to make room for itself. I'm going to use you in a way that's going to cause this giant to come down. Proverbs 18, 16 says, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. I want to show you that David came before Saul, but David also came before Goliath because of his gift. And I'm telling you right now, your gift is opening up some doors for you. Your gift, and you might think your gift is minor. You might think your gift is minuscule. You might think your gift is unnoticed and undervalued. But ladies and gentlemen, your gift, no matter how big, no matter how small, no matter where you are, your gift is going to open up doors for you. And your gift is going to bring you before great men. And your gift is going to also be a part of slaying this thing called COVID-19, the giant that's before our land. It's your gift. That God wants to use. God is using what he gave you just like he used what he put in David. And so we see the scene laid and David's just doing his job. David's just worshiping God. David's just playing and David's just serving. And little did he know that God was making room for him. Wow. I encourage you right now, and you're serving while you're doing the things of God, your gift is being made room for right now. So you just keep serving. You just keep praying. You just keep worshiping. You just keep on encouraging like you are because your gift is opening up doors for you. Wow. Then we also see how this great Goliath, this over nine foot giant, who had armor weighed more than 125 pounds. And he, I mean, his armor was more than what people weigh right now all together. And he's carrying that as this giant. And so we see for 40 days, he's taunting the Israelite army. He's instilling fear in them. And it's been said before, and I've said it many times, but it's been recorded that it'll take about 40 days to build a stronghold. And you see right now that in 40 days, he built a stronghold, that it was a stronghold in the mind of those soldiers that they felt in their heart they could not defeat this giant. They could not go against the Philistine camp. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you got to close your ears to the taunting. I don't care how much people come at you and taunt you, God before you, who can be against you? If God is on your side, then he's more than anyone that could be against you right now. And so I look at the number 40, and you know the number 40 represents a period of testing. And I believe that in this 40 days, as Goliath was rising up morning and evening, he was testing those soldiers. Where is your heart? He was testing those soldiers. Where is your courage? He was testing those soldiers. Where is your confidence in your God? He proved that they didn't have confidence. He proved that they feared. He proved that they didn't have courage. He proved that they were scared. And and so they failed the 40-day test until a man named David came up. And you might be in the midst of a test right now. I'm telling you, you can't flee like the army did. You can't flee like those soldiers did. You can't flee and be afraid and lose your courage like the Israelite soldiers did. You got to rise up like that young man David and say, listen, who is this uncircumcised giant before my God? You got to rise up in the eyes of COVID-19. You got to say, who is this uncircumcised giant in our land that's trying to bring fear in our world? We curse that to the root right now and we take authority in the name of Jesus. And I believe right now that even in your testing period, God is going to manifest himself strong in your life. God is going to cause you to rise up. You're not going to be like them on the battlefield where they were afraid day after day. They woke up probably, oh, I hope this man don't, don't antagonize me today. I hope this giant be quiet today. But no, that giant knew that he got fear in their hearts and he built on fear. Ladies and gentlemen, be careful because when fear comes in, the enemy tries to build on it. But let me give you an encouraging word. When faith is released, God builds on your faith. God strengthens you. God encourages you. And God causes you to rise up. And so I'm speaking to someone right now in your testing period today. Don't you flee. Don't you wake up thinking bad news. Don't you wake up thinking that something's going to go wrong. You wake up and say, I'm a child of God. And I'm getting ready to slay this giant before me. And I'm getting ready to give God all the praise. Yes. David was an awesome young man. And he was sent one day by his father to check on his brothers to bring some nourishment while they were on the battlefield. And Eliab, his brother, his eldest brother, he didn't receive him. 
And I've got a word for you today that we're going to be on the battlefield and sometimes there's going to be someone that don't receive you. Jesus told his disciples, when you go into a city and they don't receive you, I want you to shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. Let it be known that they refuse Jesus Christ in you. And when they refuse you, they refuse the Christ in you. When they refuse you, they refuse the anointing in you. When they refuse you, they refuse the gift that God sent you to give to them. And so Eliab, here is Eliab, the David's oldest brother, and he didn't receive him. And I want to show you how deep this is. Go to the chapter 17 and verse 28 of 1 Samuel. We're going to go to the 28th verse. We're going to stick with chapter 17 for a minute here. And I'm going to scroll through several verses here and show you some things. Verse 28. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? Let me pause right there because a real shepherd will not leave his sheep unattended to. David, before he left, made sure that he raised up another shepherd that would take care of his sheep while he was gone. And so Eliab didn't even know his own brother's heart. Wow, that's deep. Sometimes you can serve alongside of people and not know their heart, and they not know your heart, and they think the worst when they should be thinking the best. They should have been thinking the best of his younger brother. Let me continue. He says, I know thy pride. I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. So here's Eliab's response to David's honest gesture as he sent by his father Jesse to come up and just simply bring some nourishment and to check on the sons and to see the progress, see what's going on. See, to his amazement, what David saw, he didn't see faith. And so in this battle, guys, I want to share with you right now, in our battle, even we're facing today, some get it and some don't. Some are with it, some are not. You're walking by faith like David was walking by faith, but others might be walking in fear. As we've seen, Eliab was walking by fear. The other soldiers were walking by fear. David came in in faith, but he came into a room full of doubt. Come on, someone. When you come into this situation and you're a man or woman of faith and you walk into a room of doubt, don't you dumb yourself down to fit into fear. You rise yourself up or raise yourself up and release your faith and overtake the fear that is in the room. When you walk in the room, the continents of people should change. When you walk in the room, when people were doubting and complaining, they should be like, oh, psh, we can't say that because here comes so-and-so. I know they're a man or woman of faith. Yes, you want to say, thank you, I am. And we don't receive doubt. See, doubt gives room for the enemy to come in. And when you doubt, doubt begins to overtake with fear. And when it's overtaken with fear, after 40 days, he had a whole army scared. People get it, people don't. But he lie up. He made these gestures against his brother. And I want to share something with you now, and this is important that you get this. Through times of war, through times of battle, you find out where people's heart is. When you're in hard places, when you're in hard times, when you're dealing with tough situations, you find out who your real friends are. You find out who your real family is. You find out who those are really by your side. When things get really tough, when things begin to change and shift and it's uncontrollable, you want people around you who have faith, not fear. Your true heart will always show in the midst of a battle. See, it's easy to disguise a heart when times are good, but the real person shows up when they're pressed beyond personal limitations. And like David, I want to give you three things here. I hope it bless your soul today. Like David, when he dealt with his brother Eliab, you might not be valued or accepted. Because here is Eliab saying, what are you doing here? Go away. Why are you here, you nosy butt? you nothing but a kid. They thought he was just a kid that didn't know anything. They thought he was a kid that had no value. His own brothers thought that he was a kid that would just leave the sheep for some wolf to come and destroy them. But they didn't realize that David had already made preparation. Come on, someone. I'm making preparation to enter into my next season. I'm making preparation to enter into my next place. And it's going to be a greater place because God is already working. Amen, someone. And so David, like David, you might be that one that is considered a novice, a has-been. Maybe you're the one, they say, oh, you still got milk behind your ears. You don't know nothing. 
You can't bring nothing to the table. You're a weak child. We need strong men here. Listen to me. Don't be fooled by what people look like. They were fooled because Saul was head and shoulders above everyone else. But Saul also did the people wrong. And here is David, the shorter one. And I go into the New Testament. There is Zacchaeus, the shortest one, got Jesus' attention. I don't know about you, but I, I was typically always the shortest in class. The shortest among my friends. And that's okay. You might be the shortest. But God don't see you as short. God sees you as great. And David was seen as great. Even though Eliab, his own brother, was like, man, what are you doing here? You kid. You can't do nothing. You puny little kid, you. You're weak. That's the first thing. But then the second thing, see, true heart shows, guys. The truth comes out. The truth comes out when people are in fear. The truth comes out when we're at war. The truth comes out, guys, when things are up against us and we don't have a plan and we don't have an answer. You see how people value you when their backs are against the wall. David learned a lot. Like, wow, here I am bringing lunch and checking on you. And you think I have no value. Wow. Well, like this here, like David. Your motive might be misinterpreted, but do it anyway. David, you bring that lunch anyway. David, you check on your sons anyway. They might misinterpret your intent. Here they say, and here his own brother Eliab said, listen, I know you only here to see the battle. I know you just a nosy kid and you want to see blood. You want to see somebody fight against each other. You only here to watch the war. You only came here to take pictures. You only came here with your phone to videotape. You only came here to put it on live so that the whole world can see. No, that was not David's heart. David's heart was pure. David's heart was righteous. I didn't come to expose you. I came to be of service and of help to you. I came in faith believing that our God is greater than that because David's history was a lion and a bear. David knew what it was to slay things bigger than him and they had to get to that point where they received David as sent by God. And I want to tell you right now if they don't receive you, they don't receive God. David was sent by God, and yet David's motive, his, it was definitely misinterpreted. His own brothers didn't understand his heart. His own brothers questioned his, 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 uh, his mindset. You only here because you're a kid that want to see war. Wow. But here's the third wrong. Because David rose up and said, who is this uncircumcised giant coming against our God, the God of Israel? Who is this? What do we get for the man that slays him? See, Eliab was walking in fear along with the other soldiers, but David was walking in faith. And I want to show you this very carefully, is that they didn't want to admit that they were wrong. Rather than admit that a child or a young boy had the right answer, they just overtalked him. And David just did something that I admire him the most. He said, if you don't want to hear me, I'll talk to the rest of the boys. I'll talk to the rest of the men. Because who is this giant that is causing infliction in our land? Who is this giant that's defying my God? Who is this giant COVID-19 that is causing churches and people to walk in fear? Who is this COVID-19 that is causing people to doubt what God is doing? Who is this giant that's trying to make our land chaotic. I'm telling you right now, do I got some men and women of God of faith that is ready to look COVID-19 in the eye and slay it right to the ground? Yes, David came in and he had the right answer. But there are many people that although they know you're right, they won't admit it. They won't agree with you. And don't worry at all because it's to their own demise. You just stick with truth because truth always on your side will always rise up. Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. David came to the battle with the spirit of truth. And through David, God set those people free. I want you to give God a shout hallelujah for that right now. Because God wants to use you. To come through and to break up what's been going on in this world and cause people to say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We are men and women of faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. But then we have this time where David now is preparing for battle. In his heart, David seen what was going on. In his heart, David assessed the situation. And David was not pleased. David was not happy. David's looking at an army of all of Saul's choicest men that he chose, handpicked. Saul always chose the biggest. Saul always chose the strongest. 
Saul always chose the mightiest, and he overlooked a young man named David. Hallelujah. Don't worry about those who always pick the tallest, who always pick the biggest, who always pick the strongest, because God has not overlooked you where you are right now. I still believe in all my eyes that God is going to take something weak. God is going to take something minor. God is going to take something insignificant. God is going to take something of no value, and he's going to cause this world to be confounded when the COVID-19 virus is destroyed. We're looking at the big ways. We're looking for the vaccinations. We're looking for the cure and all that. And God is going to use a whole different measure that the world has not seen. And all of a sudden, they're going to rise up. And I'm telling you right now, no man is going to take credit for what God is doing right now. Look at verses 29 and 30. Wow. In 1 Samuel 17, again, I'm sticking to 1 Samuel 17 as I'm walking through this today. Verses 29 and 30 says, And David said, What have I now done? What have I done? What have I done? Just because I challenge your cowardice, I'm a bad guy. Just because I didn't come up here and start knocking at the knees and talking doubt and talking fear, I'm a bad person. David said, what have I done? Is there not a cause? Wow, that's enough right there that I could preach on that all day. But he said, is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another. Remember I told you, you know what? Eliab, if you don't want to hear me, I'll turn from you and I'll start talking to the rest. Maybe they'll hear me. And spake after the same manner. And look what happened. And the people answered him again after the former manner. They answered him. The rest of the soldiers answered him like Eliab did in fear. So David now could not find no one. Sometimes you might not be able to find anyone to agree with you or to stand with you. You might can't find anyone that doesn't uh, know what you're dealing with right now. But remember, I came along last week and I told you, you got to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord your God. David went and he talked to his older brother and his older brother pretty much just squashed his whole heart, tried to squash his whole dream. He turned to the rest of the soldiers and the rest of the soldiers, they just looked at him and like, well, we're sticking what Eliab said. There's no way we can defeat this giant. He's greater than us. He's bigger than us. They're looking at this army. They're, they're huge. Look what's going on. And David is like, listen, is there not a cause? Let me ask you this right now. Isn't God worth fighting for? David, I can imagine him staying there. What's going on here? Our God is good. Our God, remember I told you, for consider what great things that God has done for you. Go back to the text and look at it. For consider what great things God has done for you. Is there not a cause? Is God worth fighting for? Isn't your life, your ministry worth fighting for? Isn't your family worth fighting for? Isn't your integrity, your morality is worth fighting for? Ladies and gentlemen, yes, there is a cause. And the cause is Christ. David rose up in that and said, listen, don't you think that God is not worth fighting for? You're fighting for yourself, but I come fighting for God. Come on, someone. I'm not fighting for other things. I'm fighting for God. We're not just in a fight to reopen the state. Woo. We're not just in a fight so that jobs and the economy can start running again. That's a byproduct of us first fighting for the glory of God. When the glory of God is fought for, when the glory of God is released, you will see the state reopen. You still will see jobs return. You will see the economy begin to change. Is there not a cause, saints? Is there not a cause? Yes, there is a cause. And the cause is greater than just going in and reopening up things. The cause is greater than just people talking about getting money back in the economy. If we get God back in the economy, if we get God back in everything, that's the cause. We're fighting for the glory of God. We're fighting so that God can rise up and reign in this hour. We're fighting so that people are going to see Jesus. We're fighting so that people are going to recognize that there is a God in heaven and there are people of God on this earth called his kingdom. And his kingdom is being established. And so rather than us focusing on rebuilding an economy, let's rebuild the name of Jesus in every state, in every city. Yes. I'm telling you right now that in your fight and in your battle on slaying this giant, you're going to face the Eliab spirit, the spirit of doubt, the spirit of fear. They're fighting and they don't even know the cause. They're fighting for the wrong cause or they don't even know the cause they're fighting for. And I'm telling you right now, you got to know the cause before we defeat and slay this giant COVID-19. 
and the cause of defeating this giant is so that not only, and of course we want people to be healed, of course we want the economy to open, of course we want jobs to return, of course we want the unemployment rate to go down, of course we want to get things back running smooth again, but that shouldn't be the ultimate thing we want. That should not be the ultimate cause. The ultimate cause for this fight and slaying this giant is so that God can arise and the enemy be scattered. I'm preaching right now. I said let God arise and the enemy, every enemy, enemies of dead, enemies of doubt, enemies of viruses, enemies of disease and sickness, let God arise and let those enemies be scattered. Eliab was scared and he spoke out of scaredness. And I want to tell you something right now and encourage man, woman, if you're watching me right now, David's boldness intimidated his brother. And there are times, guys, when you show up, your boldness is going to intimidate somebody. You're not doing it on purpose, but you cannot down yourself and say, listen, I've got to dial it down so that people can understand. I want to be like, I don't want to be like them. I don't want to be in doubt. I don't want to be in fear. And so if, if your boldness causes other people to be intimidated, that's their problem, not yours. You got to go in the name of the Lord, your God. And so if they're intimidated by you taking a stance, let them be intimidated. But you go and continue on with God. You speak the word of truth. You speak the word with boldness. You speak the word with love and accuracy. And you let God deal with the heart hearts of people that are intimidated. You let God deal with the Eliab hearts who don't value you. You let God deal with those who don't know your motive or your true intent and you continue on with God. Thank you, Jesus. David's boldness was like none other. And they thought they were brave, but when they met Goliath and the Philistine army, you saw their real heart. But again, we're not looking at the people. We're looking at God. Remember I told you earlier, stop focusing on the problem and start focusing on Jesus. They focused on the problem so long that it got in their heart they could not win. They focused on the problem so long it got in their heart that there's nothing else they can do. I guess we'll just sustain this and pray one day Goliath go away. But let me tell you something right now. Goliath wasn't going away. Goliath had to be carried away. Woo! And I'm telling you now, COVID-19 is getting ready to get carried away. Carried up and out of here and thrown into that sea of hell where it belongs never to return again. We believe God today that there is a cause worth fighting for. And it's God. And so we look at the day of the battle, the time of the battle, the scene of the battle, the setting of the battle, the ground of the battle. And I want to go now to verses 38 through 40 in 1 Samuel 17. And Saul armed David with his armor. Now he agreed after David gave his resume, after David said, listen, I'm going to do this. Just give me, give me a chance. You know what? I don't even need the stuff you give it. I'll take it. If it comes along with the package, I'll take it. You know, I don't need, you know, I'll take the tax free. I'll take it too. You know, that these are things that were offered. Uh, the king's daughter, yes, it was offered to him. You know, he had freedom and free of ease for the rest of his life. Praise God. But it's obvious that Saul's heart wasn't with it because he began to hate David after this battle. And Saul armed David with his armor, the Bible says in verse 38. And he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. He had not proved it. The armor of Saul had not been tested. Whew. Again, another point I could build on. But in David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these. I have not proved them. I can't go with this on me. Uh uh. It hadn't been tested yet in battle. And David put them off him. David said, I don't want it. Take this helmet off. Take this coat off. Take this breastplate off. Take these shoes off. I don't need it. I'm coming in the name of the Lord. Right? And David put them off. And he took his staff in his hand. And he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. And put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had. Even in a script. And, he sling, and his sling was in his hand. And he drew near the Philistine. I know what others have sometimes might look appealing. I know how others walk and how others minister, how others carry themselves. It might attract you. I know sometimes it might make you say in your heart, man, I wish I had it like them. Or I wish I had what they had. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to reverse that and not say that. Because when you say you wish you had what they had, that means you're going to have the problems that they have. That means you're going to have the setbacks that they have. That means you're going to have the potential same fear that they have. David didn't want what Saul had because Saul wasn't chosen by God. 
So why would I want what someone has and he's not even on God's side? Wow. Remember, what the other person has is not yours. God has what he has for you. And you don't need someone else's stuff. I'm showing you today, like David, guys, you got to refuse to wear someone else's anointing. Right? Especially when that anointing has not been tested. See, when people have been tested in the fire, you can draw faith from them. I don't want their anointing because God's got my own anointing. But when I see you go through the fire and not get burned, it strengthens my faith. And when I go through fire, I'm not going to be burned either. And so everyone's got their grace and their anointing. Refuse to put on someone else's anointing. Don't be a mimic. Don't be a carbon copy of someone else. Be the God created you. Because the God created you is enough of what we need in this earth. Whatever your name is, whatever your background is, that's enough of that what we need. We don't need another person like you. We just need the original you. And so I don't want to put on someone else's anointing and try to go out and fight a battle that has not been proved or tested. Wow. Well, when you were saying this happened, when you preached this happened, how come it didn't happen for me? Because it wasn't tested. It wasn't proved. People shipwrecked because their anointing not proved. People shipwrecked because their anointing not been tested. You know the real anointing when you've gone through some fires. You know the real anointing when you treaded in the waters and you didn't drown. You know the real anointing when you rise up more fruitful than what it's been before. It's because now you've been tested. And David, my friends, was being tested. And David was ready for the test. But he didn't want to take the test on another man's anointing. He said, I've got my own anointing and I'm ready for the test and what God has got for me. I got a word for you right now. You got to stick with what got you here. Woo! Hallelujah. Sometimes we want to go and move and do and all this other stuff, but you got to stick with what God gave you, what got you the way you are today. Oh, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. God, I wish you no. Why don't you take what God has given you with your tired self and rise up and say, listen, I'm going to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And so I'm going to take the anointing that God gave me and I'm releasing it into the world. I'm going to take the anointing which God has graced me with. And no matter if you receive it or not, if you misinterpret it or not, if you develop you it or not, I'm still going to stick with it. Mm. Stick with what got you here. Don't change when times get tough. Don't switch when things get a little rocky. No, no, the boat starts rocking and things start shaking. Don't look to get off the boat. Stick with what got you here. The same Jesus that got you on the boat is going to be the same Jesus that gets you through the storm. David was anointed with a slingshot. Not a sword, not a spear, not a javelin. He didn't need the helmet, the breastplate. He didn't need all that. He was anointed with a slingshot. Now I want to share something with you. This is important because David recognized his present day anointing. David recognized what got him here. But don't think that what, what got you here, you're going to always maintain that. Because you look at David's life, David rose up from a slingshot to now dealing with a spear and a sword. So David was later graced with a greater anointing, not only on the heart, not only with the slingshot, but God began to add to his repertoire right now with a spear, with a sword, with chariots, and everything he needed to be the greatest army ever was and never lose a battle. Why? Because he came battle called COVID-19 Goliath and he came with what he had and I'm telling you right now come to the table with what you have and God will add on more as you continue to walk in him when you slay giants when you slay Goliath when you slay those things before you God is going to add on things and it's going to make it better for you I want to go to verse 45 and 48 wow man I feel like praising God today then sent David to the Philistine Think about this now. He put off all the armor, went to the brook, picked him up five stones, put him in his bag, his little pouch, had his slingshot and his staff, said, huh, let's do this. I didn't come up here to play games. I didn't come up here to have a conversation. I didn't come up here to walk in fear. I came up here in faith. I'm not used to what these boys had heard 40 days, Goliath. I don't know what you've been saying, but I'm telling you, I'm not coming how they came at you. I'm coming in the name of the Lord, my God. That's how you got to talk to COVID-19 saints. You got to say, listen, I don't know how the world is coming. I don't know how others are coming. I don't know how that, but we're coming in the name of the Lord, our God today. And in verse 45, watch this. David said to the Philistine, thou coming to me with a sword and with a spear. And with a shield. Man, you if you so big, why you need all that? He said, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. 
Remember, he challenged his brother. He said, who is this Philistine giant who defiles our God? They couldn't simply state the truth. They got to go at David like he's causing trouble. No, David stated a fact. And the Bible says, and it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. I want to show you something today that when you are faced up against that giant, you don't just walk away. You don't even just walk toward it. David said, forget this stuff. I'm making haste to run to you. I'm not going to let you just come at me. I'm coming at you first and I'm running in the name of the Lord, my God. I'm not going to let you defeat me. I'm showing you that I'm not afraid of how big you are. I'm not afraid of how much impact you have. I'm running to you and I'm letting you know you're going down, giant, because I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the greatest army ever. I'm coming to you, not with a sword, not with a spear, not with a shield, but I'm coming to you as one man serving one God to tell you I'm running to your face because you're going to die today? How many of you are bold enough today to run to the face of COVID-19 and say, listen, you're going to die today. I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord my God. I'm speaking life over death. I'm speaking blessings over cursings and you are going down. Don't run away. Run to the battle. Don't run from it. Run into the battle. Run into the battle because you know God is with you. Why? How do you know? Because you know what the scripture says. It's not by might nor it's by your own power, but it's by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. So it's time for you now to not use your own might or your own power. That's why David didn't need the sword. That's why he didn't need the spear. That's why he didn't need the shield. He came in the name of the Lord his God. The spirit of the Lord was upon him, and it was by the power of God. It was by the anointing of God. And the same thing over our life today. It's going to be by the power of God, the anointing of God over you. And it's time for us, ladies and gentlemen, to approach this giant COVID-19 in the name of the Lord our God. It's time to rise up and if you're with me today, I want you to say this nice and loud or post it on there. I'm coming to you COVID-19 in the name of the Lord my God. I want you to put it out there in the world now. I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord my God. COVID-19, you are going down. In Jesus name. I show you this and this is powerful. David, of course, he took off of Saul's armor. He didn't need Saul's anointing. He didn't need Saul's stuff. What he needed was the Spirit of God. Yes, the Spirit of God was there. Yes, the Spirit of God was upon him. Yes, he was anointed by God. And I want to show you his anointing used what got him there. A slingshot and stones. Now I want to show you this. David reached down and picked up five stones. But why is it that he picked down and used five stones, but he actually only slung one? I really begin to look at this deeper than just the eye meets in terms of scripture. And the Lord began to deal with me strongly. He said, although he had five stones and he only used one, I'm telling you that it's going to take one man to rise up. One man being Christ in his church. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why we got to be one in the body of Christ. Let's rise up as one man church and slay this giant. We cannot have five different people rise. No, we need one man, the body of Christ, locally, globally, to rise up as one man. We got to have the spirit of oneness. I've always preached unity. I always preach oneness because that's how we get things done. That's why David only used one stone. He didn't need all five stones. He just needed one to represent the unity of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, to represent the unity of the body of Christ. We are one, one body, all the members one. Jesus is the head. It was about the oneness, the structure of unity that's going to defeat everything. I'm showing you that it wasn't uh, natural things. Our weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, the Bible says, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And I'm showing you that it takes unity to defeat these giants today. It takes unity in the body of Christ to cause COVID-19 to come down. We see disunity in our government today. Day, and that's why we got so much going on. But when we rise up as one, when we come together as the body of Christ, we're going to see the army of the Lord, which is led by the Lord of the greatest armies, God himself, and we're going to slay this giant. Church, it's time to rise up as one. One stone, one church. One stone, one body. One stone, one spirit. One stone. Whew. Oneness of God. What's the results, ladies and gentlemen? One man 
using one stone, caused an entire army who once lived in fear to now start operating in confidence and faith. Why? Because they saw David was led by God and Goliath came down and he took his head. And I'm telling you, we're taking a head off of COVID-19. And when we take the head off of COVID-19, we're going to rise up and the rest of the world that was in fear, they're going to come along and they're going to receive Jesus. They're going to come into the kingdom. Just like those other soldiers, now they got the confidence to move forward and take out the rest of the Philistine army and chase them down. Now, what it's going to take, it's going to take for the body of Christ to rise up as one and cause those that are living in fear, those that are running scared to come in now and say, God, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? I want to encourage you right now that you are that one that God wants to use no matter how little, no matter how big, no matter how small, no matter where you are, no matter who you are. God wants to use you in slaying this giant. You got to get past what other people think, feel, and know about you, and you got to go in the name of the Lord your God. Listen, anybody that's ever done anything great is always going to be criticized. They criticized Jesus, but he was the greatest ever on this earth. They criticized Peter and Paul, but they were some of the greatest apostles ever to walk this earth. Anyone and everyone that has the potential and will do something good and great in this earth, you will be misunderstood and mistreated, but you still got to go in the name of the Lord your God because that giant must come down. I hope you got this word today. I want to pray with you right now where you are. I want to talk to every giant slayer right now. If you're a giant slayer, I need you to tell me right now, I am a giant slayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now by the blood, through the blood of my Savior, Jesus Christ. And I declare today that I am a giant slayer. I am a giant slayer. And this COVID-19 giant and any other giant in our world must come down. Father, I declare right now that I will be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Lord God, I'm coming. I'm rising up in the name of the Lord of the greatest army ever. And Lord God, we trust you right now that your people that are watching, those that are listening, those that will be listening, shall be encouraged by this word and shall mount up, Lord God, and begin to soar, shall go beyond normal expectation and move under the spirit of God. Father, I thank you that faith has come alive. I thank you, Lord God, that faith is here. I thank you that faith is moving strong. And so, Lord, we need you right now to cause us to continue to thrust forward. We are the giant slayers of our time. We are the one man in this earth, the body of Christ, the church on which Jesus founded with his blood. And so as one man, as one body, as one spirit, we come now in the name of the Lord God and we command everything that's working against the kingdom of God be slayed this day in Jesus' name. God, we give you glory and honor and praise. For this, Lord God, is your time. Lord God, you take the weak things of this world to the confound the wise. And so, Lord, we receive right now the method, the plan, the strategy of which you wish to use. As you use the smallest, the youngest, being David, to go before a giant and slay. Even now, you use, Lord, the smallest, the youngest, Lord God, to slay this giant in our land. God, we receive our assignment today. We don't need no one else's anointing to do what you've called us to do. But, Lord, we believe you right now. And we declare that in this presence of this social media time together, that everyone that is watching, we are giant slayers together. In every city, in every state, in every country, we're giant slayers because we're one. And so, God, we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Real quickly here, if you are watching me now and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, maybe you've heard of him. You heard of him as a prophet. You heard of him as some great healer. You heard of him who claimed to be the son of God. Well, let me tell you, he is and always will be the son of God that came to this earth to redeem mankind from destruction. And so I want to encourage you today, if you haven't made Jesus your Lord, this is your hour of opportunity. This is your moment right now. I want you to make Jesus Lord of your life. Just simply say where you are right now, Lord, forgive me. Come into my life. Forgive me of all of my sins. I confess them before you right now. I do confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you, Jesus, raised, God, you raised Jesus from the dead and I am saved. Father, I thank you right now that old things pass away and behold, all things become new. If you prayed that prayer, you're saved. You're a child of God. You belong now with us in this one-man army, the church. 
defeating giants, and living joyous in this earth. I celebrate you today. I thank God for you today. I pray that God's spirit would come upon you, that you would allow yourself to be baptized, consumed, immersed in the spirit of God so that he can guide you and lead you. I know you might have questions. You might have thoughts or comments. Let me say this here, that immediately following this program today, immediately following this service, when I conclude, I want you to call this number. It's 701-802-5269. That's our prayer line. That's our virtual altar. The access code is 371-0737. It'll be at the bottom of the screen, but you call that number. If you receive Christ, you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, listen, even if you need prayer, even if you're dealing with pain, sickness, problems, debt, whatever it is, if you need prayer, there's someone that's going to be waiting on the phone for you immediately after the conclusion. Immediately following this, you call that number. I'll repeat that number again, 701-802-5269. The access code is 371-0737. Don't you delay. When we finish, call that number. Use that access code. Get prayer. Be prayed for. Cover your life in prayer. Cover your family in prayer. Cover your children in prayer. Cover it in prayer, all right? We thank God for you. This moment in time, I want you to get your communion together. This is important. If you receive Christ, I want you to do it too. This symbolizes the body and blood of Jesus. Again, you know, if you have crackers, if you have juice, whatever you have, bread, uh, whatever you have that can be symbolic, I want you to take a minute. I want you to bless it. And then break it. And then give thanks by just simply saying, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my strength. And I want you to hold that bread in your right hand. I want you to declare this with me. By his stripes, I am healed. By his stripes, I've been made whole. By his stripes, I am walking righteous and healing in Jesus' name. Take, eat. This is the body. Hallelujah. I want you to get the cup ready. I want you to say these words with me. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Jesus, I thank you that you paid the debt for my eternal redemption from the rule of sin in my life by your precious blood. And so today, I drink this cup. Lord God, not because of what I've done, but because of what Jesus did. I've been redeemed. I'm a child of God. Friends, take ye, drink all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Guys, I hope you've been blessed. We thank God for you watching today. Send me a message. Let me know if you enjoy. Let me know you're encouraged. Let me know that you are strong and strengthened. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube page. Let's get the message of the kingdom of God out. I want to take a minute now and just bless your seed. As we do on our Sundays, we want to just bless the seed that's sown. But the Bible said you give it seed to the sower. And so I want you to get your seed in your hand, your seed, whatever it might be. If it's that credit card, whatever it might be, that check, that cash, whatever it is, it's the seed. Your tithe belong to God, your offering, we're going to sow it into the kingdom. And I want you to hold it up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to give. Give and it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men give it to our bosom. Father, we bless this right now. And we thank you that our cupboards should never be empty. Our vats will always be full. Our cups will overflow as we continue to give. Thank you, Father, for the abundance of blessings over our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want to give by phone or text, Simply text the number at the bottom of your screen. It's 833-968-1622. Just simply text the word give and you'd be set up to give that way. Our PayPal link is at the bottom. You can do it that way too. Or if you decide to do it online, go to our website. It's fine. Go and click the prompt thing to give and it'll lead you there. If not, if you want to mail it in, that's okay too. Our PO box is 771 
Carpentersville, Illinois, 60110. God bless you. It has been an awesome time here today. I thank God for all of you. Uh, I know my wife is coming. She wants to just love on, on, the, on the mothers today as she always does. Uh, we thank God for her encouragement. So moms, just hang in with us a few minutes longer. As you know, it's Mother's Day. Uh, we always have something for you. We always uh, just treat you well. It's not just on Mother's Day, but every day. And so praise God for all of our mothers here that are right now. This time is for you. And so we thank God for you. So here's my wife. She's going to come and just do something uh, short for you guys and just be a blessing. Again, when we conclude, we want you to call the number for prayer, okay? Please call that number, 701-802-5269, access code 371-0737. Someone's waiting to pray with you. You can even call it. Amen. Happy Mother's Day again to all the mothers, all of you that are natural mothers, even all of you that are spiritual mothers, even all of you that are um, mothers to just those that come across your pathway. We say happy Mother's Day to you, and I just want to share something special with the mothers. Mothers are special. There is no love like a mother's love, no stronger bond on earth, like the precious bond that comes from God to a mother when she gives birth. A mother's love is forever strong, never changing for all time. And when her children need her most, a mother's love will shine. God bless these special mothers. God bless them, everyone, for all the tears and heartache and for the special work they've done. When her days on earth are over, a mother's love lives on through many generations with God's blessings on each one. Be thankful for our mothers, for their love, for they love with a higher love from the power God has given and the strength from up above. I say happy Mother's Day to you guys. And I'm just gonna try this. My voice is kind of shaky right now, but uh, I shared it uh, with a lot of people on yesterday and I just wanna share it to those of you because God thinks that you are beautiful. And I know that all of you that have crossed my pathway, I think that you are beautiful. So you are so beautiful to me you are so beautiful to me can't you see you're everything I hope for you're everything I need as spiritual children and people and women of God you are so beautiful to me. I love you with the love of Jesus. I pray you have a blessed and prosperous Mother's Day. And children, please bless your mothers. Love you. Amen. Praise God. Thank you guys so much. Uh, mothers, again, we love you with the love of Jesus. Have a blessed, blessed Mother's Day. It's been a great, great uh, morning slash now afternoon spending with you. Uh, thank you guys for just joining along and sticking with us. Uh, share this message out there. That just that was a message of love. Uh, that was also a word of encouragement for you. Guys, we're slaying the giant today, and we're believing God that we're going to be triumphant in him. And so we're going to sign off. Again, I remind you, if you need prayer, please call that number now. There is someone waiting right now to pray with you. 701 802-5269 access code is 371-0737 they will be there right now and then we're also going to have a time of prayer you can call in tomorrow at 8 p.m i'll announce that online again we want to make sure our virtual altar is open for you so take advantage my friends of this virtual altar we love you with the love of jesus now as we depart from this place we don't depart from your presence but we leave confessing that we're blessed we're prosperous, we're healthy, and we're wealthy, and all the blessing of Deuteronomy 28 are mine. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.